Stories enhanced through essential everyday experiences. Hi, my name's Gwyn McCormack from the United Kingdom. I'm the founder of Positive Eye. I'm delighted to share this presentation with you. Setting the scene. There's a child in a class and they've been asked to write a story about how Harry Potter feels when he's sitting in the cupboard under the stairs in Privet Drive. The child who's visually impaired looks around the room. Everybody else is writing their story, apart from them. They feel small, they feel worried. They think, I don't know what a cupboard under the stairs is. I've never seen one and been in one. What is one? What's a cupboard? At break time, they've written nothing. Their page is blank. Everybody else hands in beautifully written stories. The teacher isn't so pleased because they feel the child has perhaps been a little lazy and not tried very hard. Perhaps what's not understood is that the child may never have sat in a cupboard under the stairs or understood how cold it is in the cupboard, what it smells like, what's in the cupboard, to even begin to have the language to be able to write the story. And it really makes me think about the importance of the experience for the child. We write stories because we've had the experience and we can write about that experience. We've got the language to use to write the story. What we really needed to have done, what the teacher needs to have done with that little boy or that little girl, is to go on an adventure and sit in a cupboard under the stairs and feel the cold walls or the warm walls and smell the cupboard and explore what's in the cupboard and talk about different things you can keep in a cupboard under the stairs and sit very scrunched up and tightly formed as if you're very frightened or do you sit and relax when you're in the cupboard how would you be what sort of facial expression would you have and what would your voice tone sound i'm really frightened in this cupboard or this is really fun in this cupboard which would it be so we need to go in the cupboard and experience that. Then, once we've felt the cupboard and explored the cupboard, we need to come back to the class and create a model of the cupboard and pretend to come out of the cupboard and do just what Harry Potter did when he was sitting in that cupboard and he opened the door. Then when I'm in the class, I've got more opportunity of being able to write the story of how Harry Potter felt because I've felt it myself, I've experienced the emotions, I understand the shape and the form and the purpose of a cupboard under the stairs. I've gone to explore other cupboards to compare to I understand same and different cupboards. Then I can write my story. Harry Potter sitting in the cupboard under the stairs. So this is a picture of me dressed as Harry Potter and I made a cardboard cupboard and I came out of it. I put on my scarf and my white top and I acted the part of Harry Potter. I made lots of letters and I wrote the addresses on them and I pretended to throw them over the top of the cupboard. This is a really important part of literacy. I'm role playing the situation for Harry Potter. I'm reenacting what it feels like. I've sat in the real cupboard and now I'm sitting in the pretend cupboard. I'm understanding real and pretend. I'm also understanding real cupboard and model of the cupboard. We're also developing problem solving, sequencing, tactile discrimination, fine motor, language development, and we could even make a book about the order in which we made the model. Research by Koenig and Farenkopf. In 1997, Alan Koenig and Carol Farenkopf's research, The Essential Experiences to Undergird the Early Development of Literacy, went through 254 reading books across three reading schemes. And they identified that there were 22 global areas of experience. Their research identified that these were the experiences that the child needed to undergird early literacy. Some of the 22 essential experiences include doing or making things, experiences with friends, working together, sharing, helping, looking for or finding something, experiences in the community, experiences at home, experiences with living creatures, experiencing emotions and a sense of well-being, 
exploring nature, plants and insects. I've set up a chart and I have the, have the 22 experiences in the chart and I look at each experience and I look at the story that I'm creating and I ask myself which experiences it covers. It really is a helpful tool for teachers to have that because then they can see, well, actually it covers that experience, this story. And then the next question is, does the child have that experience to help them access the story? So it helps you to identify which gaps or which concepts you need to work on to ensure that the child can take part in the story in a meaningful way. Time to dress up as Fishman Phil from Marvin's Market Adventure. We dress up and we immerse ourselves in the story and what happens at Fishman Phil's store. And then we're helping the children to do just the same. Big jacket with bumpy fish on the pocket. So little smooth shiny fish on the little pockets and big bumpy fish on the big pockets. So if we wear one and the child wears one and we wear a hat, the big fish on it, we're becoming the character of Fishman Phil. And that's a really important part of literacy and the multi-sensory approach. It's one of the key literacy access skills and doesn't just stay with young children. I think this skill and this need and requirement stays with children and young people right through their education. How can we experience what it feels like for Fishman Phil unless we're wearing what he wears and we're talking like he talks and we're pretending to be a fish and sounding like a fish. I'm also wearing a high contrast yellow top, long sleeve top, and I have a red neckerchief around my neck to just give better high contrast. It tidies up my neck area. And actually, I really need to lose my hair towards the back. That would be even better to declutter myself. Let's go over to the marketplace now and find out what's happening at Fishman Phil's. Fishman Phil's fish stall. Bumpy fish and little smooth shiny fish. Red and yellow bumpy fish and little bumpy fish. Big bumpy fish and little smooth shiny fish. Hi there, Fishman Phil, said Marvin. How are you today? Oh no, there was Fishman Phil walking along, arriving at the stall at the same time as Marvin. And he was carrying a really big pile of boxes. Oh! Fishman Phil and all his boxes of fish went flying through the air and then there was a crash, a bang and a wallop and Fishman Phil landed flat on the floor. The boxes burst open and all the fish went sliding and sliding all over the floor. Uh, uh, said Marvin, those fish smell so fishy. <laughs> oh dear, help, said Fishman Phil. Oh no, all my fish are muddled up. The big bumpy ones are muddled up with the little smooth shiny ones. What am I going to do, Marvin? Oh, don't worry, Fishman Phil. Your friend Marvin's here. I will help you to sort the fish. Oh, you're such a kind and helpful little boy, Marvin. Leave it to me, Fishman Phil. Okay, I'm going to put the big bumpy fish, the big bumpy fish with bumps on, bump, 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 bump. I'm going to put those in the, into the box that has big bumpy fish on it, yeah, into there. And then I'm going to get all the little shiny fish which are really, really And they're going to put them in the little smooth shiny fish box. And the little shiny fish box. Oh, uh, and this one, Fishman Phil, this one, this feels really, really bumpy. That one, where does that one go, Marvin? Fishman Phil, it goes in the bumpy fish box. Absolutely, Marvin. And so Marvin put all the bumpy fish back in the big bumpy fish box. And he put all the little smooth shiny fish 
back in their little smooth shiny fish box. Fishman Phil, I have done that. Oh, let me have a look. Make sure you've done it right, Marvin. Let me have a look now. Let me see. Let me see. Bumpy fish, bumpy fish, bumpy fish. Yep, 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 yep. And yeah, little shiny fish, little shiny fish, little shiny fish. Well done, Marvin. You've done a great job. Oh, thanks, Fishman Phil. Fishman Phil. It's my grandma's birthday and I would like to buy a fish for her pond. Well done Marvin, you sorted the fish. Let's leave the story there for now. High contrast resources, singing, voice, intonation and rhythm support the experience. Fish, the bumpy, bumpy, bumpy fish, the bumpy fish, the bumpy fish, the bumpy, bumpy, bumpy fish. Smooth little shiny fish, smooth little shiny fish, I'm a smooth little shiny fish. Imaginary play and dressing up important stage of development to move from the 3D model to the 2D cutout and we can use imaginary play and dressing up to be that person and then we can show the cardboard cutout of the character to understand that it's the same but different. The same character pretending to be Fishman Phil. I'm pretending to be Fishman Phil this is pretending to be Fishman Phil. But it's part of that hierarchy of development where we move children from the concrete and the real object to the model of the object to the cardboard cutout. Consider literacy access skills, language, concept, fine motor, tactile, visual, book and story skills. The literacy access skills that I tend to think about and I always think of these access skills as being little aeroplanes going over the child's head. And we're pulling down the individual package to create for the child with their own individual combination of access skills that they require to, to develop, to enable them to participate in the story or in the literacy experience. So things like language development, concept building, fine motor skills, tactile discrimination skills, use of visual skills, book and story skills. And, and also I add on around that model making, imaginary play, music, singing, dancing, technology. All those things create that wonderful multi-sensory approach to literacy. Time to head back to Flora Flowers stall. In chapter two of Marvin's Market Adventure, Marvin visits Flora Flower's stall. Flora Flower! Flora Flower! He wants to buy his grandma a beautiful flower for her garden. Let's see what happens next. All the flowers in Flora Flower's bucket on her stall were so very beautiful. There were red ones, yellow ones, blue ones and orange ones spinning in the breeze. Wow! Marvin started to sniff the flowers. Mmm! Yes, these flowers smell so beautiful. I don't know which one's going to look nice in my grandma's garden, said Marvin. Just then, he heard a voice. It was going. La 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 Oh! <laughs> Hello? Hello? I didn't see you there. My name is Flora Flower. How are you doing today? Everybody okay? <gasps> Did you say your name was? Marvin? I'm very pleased to meet you, Marvin. Oh, <laughs> I'm really sorry. I'm very pleased to meet you, Marvin, said Flora Flower. How may I help you today, said Flora Flower, looking at her flower and dancing around. Oh, well, well it's, it's, it's my grandma's birthday and I want to buy her a beautiful flower for her garden. Oh, I have got lots and lots and lots and lots of beautiful flowers. Which one would you like? Yellow, blue, orange or red? said Flora Flower <laughs> in her best voice. Oh, 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 I, I, I really like that, that yellow one. It looks a little bit tatty like the da rain has damaged its leaves. Oh, you can have that one, Marvin, for free for being such a kind boy. Just as he was picking the flower up, 
he heard a little voice go, Thank you for picking me. My name's Sunny Sunflower. And I am magic. Sunny Sunflower did a hop, a skip, and a jump, and started to walk alongside Marvin. Wow, I would like to be your friend, Marvin. I am really good at making picnics. I can help you to make your grandma's picnic with you. Oh, so pleased to meet you, Sunny Sunflower. Yeah, let's go. Flora Flowers, hat and apron, red hat and red apron. Flora Flowers, flower stall. A picture of Sunny Sunflower. A practical story bucket resource. Story bucket with Marvin and Grandma in. Story buckets are a really excellent way of bringing all the resources and objects together for the story. And I often talk about helping teachers and teaching assistants, power professionals to prepare well in advance of the lesson. So you're going to deliver the Marvin story or the Harry Potter story or the story of Frozen in January. And now, in December, is the time to start preparing. Make a list of the five top things you'd like to put in the storybook, your five top objects or your top five puppets or things you want to bring together that will help the child to understand the story in a concrete, meaningful way. Add those to the story bucket and ask everybody in the team to start collecting. Tick off the list and when that list is complete and there's time left, write another five items. So it is not a huge task and you don't feel you've got to have something for every tiny aspect of the story. But at least when you start reading the story to the rest of the children, you have something in place and you have some items for the child who's visually impaired or with a multisensory impairment to be able to access. So this story bucket is just one example of how to do that. You could have a box, you could have a bag, you could have a rucksack, a container, a laundry basket that's decorated that you can use over and over again. I buy a bucket apron from um, a DIY place here in the UK and it has pockets in it. And it's meant for your trowels and things for the garden. So you can put the items from the story, the real objects or the models into the pockets. So I haven't gone through Barbara Baker, the lovely cake maker, when Marvin visits her store to buy gingerbread people and buns and things. But I've put her hat in there. And then the children can in love finding the hat and putting it on the head. And they're doing all that place, put on, put off. Does it fit? Is it too small? Is it too big? So as soon as we start to play, the beautiful language development that goes with it is amazing. We're also developing fine motor and tactile discrimination in everything we do. Grandma's got a hat, Marvin hasn't got a hat. Grandma's hat is, sounds crunchy and it's silky to the touch. Marvin's hair feels spiky. So as soon as we explore the objects, we can build in the language, but we can build in the opportunities for tactile discrimination and fine motor and language development at the same time. So in there, there's some little flowers, some little plastic flowers with different centres, so you can do frame and different and matching. You could use those as counting sticks as well. There's a pom-pom for when we get to Grandma's party or her picnic, so we can sing happy birthday and wave the pom-pom. We can also do visual attention and fixation work with a pom pom and shine a torch onto it. Put a torch ready in the pocket there. I put a little red plastic tablecloth for the picnic, a square tablecloth. We can do the same, different, we can do different shapes. Put a fishing net in, an extendable fishing net to catch the fish. Great for visual directed reaching, great for finding. Children love to find. Put all the bumpy fish in the fishing net, take them out to put all the smooth ones in can sort the fish out into the boxes from the fishing net. And then the white labels are credit cards, are black credit cards that I buy off Amazon. And I put a, a, a printer label and stick it on. And I put the word on to match the object. So the child can either read the word in print or braille or listen to an audio label or feel the tactile shape or feel the texture of the thing that's in that pocket, whichever is suitable for the child. 
and then they can either have these laid out on the table and match them up to the right object in the pocket, or they can read and explore. So there's lots of ways of using those credit cards. They are a great invention, and I highly recommend a, a set of those. To summarise the presentation, begins in the everyday experience and that's where we should always make our starting point be Marvin and Grandma in a story bucket. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to reach out to me if you'd like any more information.